All right, this video is going to be a response to a question I had from a subscriber. Uh, their question was basically, what are my thoughts on the legality or non-legality of public nudity in a, a libertarian or anarcho-capitalist legal order? And I don't want to really go into that question too much uh, because there's a pretty straightforward, simple answer for, uh, in terms of aligning with my political philosophy. But to kind of use this as a pivot to talk about two other related issues. Um, and one of them is that a lot of these policy questions that get discussed uh, all the time, I find really frustrating because uh, the debate is framed in such a way that it uh, relies on a chain of assumptions, most of which I may not agree with. Um, so to use another example, uh, one, one hot, occasional hot button uh, topic, uh, of debate in the United States anyway is should evolution be taught in public schools and I find this debate really really annoying because it makes people want to talk about the pros and cons of you know whether evolution is true and uh, I mean it's really become kind of a political football in the culture war where what's actually going on is a lot of people who really hate religion are trying to use evolution as a bludgeon to destroy religion in the minds of the youth, right? The idea being that their parents indoctrinate them to be Christian generally, uh, and if we can uh, persuade them to believe in evolution in school, they won't be Christian anymore. They'll or their faith will, will be greatly tested. And then, contrarily, Christians viewing this as something that they should then uh, resist. And even though I'm a big believer in evolution. I find evolution very interesting, and most of the books that I read that are not about politics, history, or economics are about like human evolution because it's a topic I find fascinating. I find this debate just completely silly because it rests on a series of assumptions uh, that I don't necessarily agree with. So some of those assumptions are ones that I think most people would disagree with me on, and there would be a big debate. So one being that the government should be running schools at all, any any schools or the majority of schools. Now, I understand that most people think that government should run schools, uh, but I don't. In fact, I think it's a pretty, pretty straightforward argument that they shouldn't be. Uh, education, education for children is not uh, a public good. It's not something that you can't exclude. It's not something that can't be provided on the market much cheaper and much better. Uh, but I understand fully that that's an argument that most people, because of social proof and because of conservative bias, tend to not agree with it. Most people grow up in a society where most people go to schools that are paid for by the government and they just assume that that's the correct way to go. But that's not the only assumption built into that argument. There's also the assumption that uh, there is a, not only that the government should be running the schools, but that there is some kind of uh, basic pedagogy or basic curriculum that um, should should be put that everyone should experience or at least most everyone should experience uh, and then also that that curriculum ought to include a study of evolution now any one of those propositions being contentious or being faulty would end the entire debate about having uh, whether or not we should teach evolution in public schools and I think although the argument that you know maybe government shouldn't be in schools at all is one that not many people would believe in the argument that there is a single curriculum or a single pedagogy that should be applied to everyone I think is one that actually a lot of people who aren't necessarily libertarians would understand is, is not a very good argument in fact it's a very tenuous kind of position to have that uh, there is some kind of one one curriculum that should be universalized to everyone or nearly everyone uh, and even a lot of I mean even in the education film you could you could be talk to people who are politically left-wing politically right-wing a lot of people are going to understand that actually doesn't make a lot of sense uh, and then on top of that uh, including evolution in, in in a curriculum is far from obvious. Even if we want to say that evolution is important and that evolution is true, uh, both things that I would personally agree with, that doesn't mean that it deserves a place in the curriculum. There's literally millions, if not infinite, number of, of topics that are both important and true. We could talk uh, about uh, uh, astronomy or levels of mathematics or calculus uh, 
or literature or history or economics or politics and at the end of the day there's not enough time to include everything that we might think is important and think stuff that might actually be important so the question of what do you inc include in a curriculum is much more complicated than just saying this is something that's important and this is something that could potentially be useful um, in fact unless you're going into a field where this is going to be used a lot or it's something that you're personally very interested in I think it's a very very open question whether this is something that should be included and so you know debates like that I find really annoying or even topics that I find uh, personally really interesting so uh, I've made videos about this in the past but the the use of uh, communal showering in gym class I think that that's something that's really beneficial socially and hygienically however I don't think that I would agree with the idea that well this should be a policy that public schools should follow because I just don't believe in public schools and I also don't believe that physical education is something that is necessarily the best for everyone right I think that every individual is going to have different values and different goals and different capabilities and that the the optimal the best uh, curriculum for that person is not going to be the same as the best optimal curriculum for another person although there might be a lot of overlap there might be lots of people who say want to learn how to read although I think there's pretty strong evidence that most people are going to receive education and in 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 literacy independent of whether they go to school or not and you're only talking about a minority of basically derelict families or extremely well, poor families but even not then uh, there's there's evidence that even very poor families if they value uh, literacy will learn literacy uh, the uh, the reconstruction period in the United States shows this very clearly with slaves for its former slaves um, but it's not clear that these things are that everyone should have the same thing there are, there's plenty of people I think could pers personally reasonably assert that going to the gym class is not something that should be important to them and that they should not be forced to do uh, in which case I would I would never dream of telling them well you need to go to gym class and you need to have a communal shower uh, just as I would never dream of telling somebody you need to learn about evolution or you need to learn about whatever it is because there, there's so many different things that people could want to learn now uh, government's ability to provide that good or service catering to that uh, those specific and varied needs is very limited you, you come into this very uh, ethically difficult area and and where uh, providing everyone what they want is going to provide different people with different things and then that's not equality then you're not giving an egalitarian solution not everyone's getting exactly the same thing some people are getting a lot more some people are getting a lot less at, at least in terms of uh, the costs involved or right? you might have an optimal or an idealized pedagogy or curriculum that entails a certain certain classes a b and c and someone else might entail classes x y and z and the costs on those imposed both based on your need and the requirements of the curriculum could be very different and that is not the type of provision of a service that states allow for they really have to kind of set out a very standard here is your 3,000 calories here is your reading writing and arithmetic and here is your indoctrination into why the government is the solution to all of our problems all right so uh, when someone asks me about public nudity I think that that is a question that uh, you know again it really boils down to accepting a whole bunch of other premises most of which I don't agree with and it touches on another issue here of a lot of the a lot of the ethical arguments people make and a lot of the ethical um, kind of thought experience experiments people have uh, are only difficult questions in the sense and in the in the scenario where we have public spaces to begin with uh, if you have a public space you are suddenly saddled uh, with this ethical question of how do you balance various competing public interests people have a very simplistic uh, kind of impulse in their idea in, in their thinking that if something is public then there's this obviously this one correct uh, answer and then that should be applied so uh, people who really believe fervently in using evolution as a club against religious religious people for instance just assume look it's obviously the, the correct answer that in the public sphere 
evolution should be taught. Uh, and that's not obviously true. And I remember having this debate in, in college, actually, when I was in a higher level education class. Um, you know, I said, look, I believe in evolution and evolution is true as far as I know and beneficial for lots of people to learn. Uh, but, you know, more than half the country, over 100 million people in the United States believe in creationism. They believe uh, in a somewhat, at least literal interpretation of the Bible when it comes to human, the, the devolution of, spirit, uh, of species. Uh, and those people pay taxes. They pay for the schools. They're being forced to pay for the schools. And I find it very ethically troubling to go to those people and tell them, you are obligated to pay for schools and you're obligated to send your children uh, to schools or to provide an education that is, uh, you know, uh, approved by the state, even if you don't technically send them to a public school. But then your views and your desires and your values are, are going to be discounted in terms of deciding what to teach in those schools. I find that very ethically troubling and very ethically difficult and whatever you might think about evolution there's going to be other issues where, where you find that you are in a minority or that your views are not that widespread or that you're not so uh, so uh, you have so much surety in your ideas that you're uh, willing to impose them on everyone else and so uh, you know, when we talk about something like nudity, we have people who are very outspoken critics of nudity, who think that it's completely wrong, that it's perverted, that it's awful, and that it's inappropriate, that it has no value, and then of other people who think that it's very good, and that it's very healthy, and that it's very social, and we come up to this kind of irreconcilable um, uh, conflict between uh, not just those two groups, but the entire spectrum of, of what people think. Uh, and how do you, how, how can there be a, a single answer for the public space? Well, kind of the, the get out of jail free card here, the, the, one of the, the great things about a anarcho-capitalist libertarian private property order is there is no public space or it's a marginal public space. So you might have, you might have unowned area. You might have area that is the commons, but that area is probably going to be practically speaking. Uh, very limited and very marginal and so questions dealing with it are less important and I will talk about that in a little bit here but everything is private property and then it's very clear what is the what are the rules that the private property owner make um, another another kind of related issue would be again coming out recently you know, what about trans bathrooms what do you do about trans people can uh, a female to male uh, use a male bathroom or more controversially I would say a male to female use a female bathroom. Uh, the idea that there needs to be a national standard uh, applied to bathrooms everywhere on this is just so patently absurd. Uh, I can say many, many places are going to say, "Hey, at this at this grocery store, at this restaurant, at this amusement park, at this gym, this is what we think. We're the owners, based on what the the property owners and then their customers. If we're talking about a, a space that is dealing with customers." Uh, we believe X, Y, or Z. And in some places they're going to say, hey, you know, uh, so Planet Fitness is a good example. Planet, Planet, Planet Fitness, even though it's a terrible gym and I don't think anyone should ever go there, you know, they say we're a judgment-free zone and people can use whatever bathroom they want. And that's fine. And if you don't like that and you're a, a patron of Planet Fitness, you can always cancel or you can go to a different gym or you can lobby them to change. Vice versa, another gym could say, hey, we, uh, you know, the, the people who come here don't don't really want that or that's not something that we're really comfortable with and they can have a different policy and that's going to aggravate the people the universalists the reformers the people who think that the entire world needs to match their um, idealized version uh, but those people are are the ones who pave the way to hell right this those are the serons and the Melkors of, of the real world, the ones who are so certain that they know what's best for everyone that they're willing to impose that through the through the coercive power of the state onto everybody else, uh, rather than persuading them. So I have no problem with you thinking that you're right and say going to a gym that says, you know maybe a gym says hey we will not allow trans people to you know we they have to go to the bathroom of, of the gender of their birth or the sex of their birth. I have absolutely no problem with somebody going to them and trying to persuade them or to boycott them or that's all fine 
but to uh, force a single policy onto everyone, I think, not only is that ethically very questionable and, and, and dubious, uh, it's also like in terms of the utilitarian arc, uh, outcomes, uh, it's very, very suboptimal. Our people are, are having their choices uh, infringed upon and they are not able to uh, act in the ways that they think is best. So uh, I think that's kind of the answer. You're gonna have places that say, um, say roadways or parks that are going to say we do or we do not allow nudity or beaches you know I've been to private beaches most of the beaches that I've been to actually in my life are private beaches uh, growing up in Michigan there were lots of lakes um, most of the lakes were on private land and you would just have people who owned areas that they would convert into beaches and then they would let people use them and you would pay five dollars or two dollars or three dollars and you could use those beaches and I could see some of those places saying hey you know, if you're going to use our beach, then we want you covered or not. And that seems to me like the only real solution here. Now, there's another level of the debate that we can have. Are there actual benefits, pros and cons to it? Sure, of course. And that's that's an independent discussion. Uh, if you're asking me personally, I think that uh, contextual nudity is good in certain circumstances and not others. I think that there are certainly professional situations where that doesn't make a lot of sense, like say in the workforce. I think uh, in certain areas where where there's children and where they aren't in the under supervision of say their immediate family, that's probably not a good idea. Uh, but in other situations such as in gyms or locker rooms or perhaps, perhaps in nude beaches, um, that it's something that people should be more comfortable with. In, in general, I think that our society has become a little too prudish uh, and a little too uh, cocooned from exposure uh, of their bodies, but that is not something that I think then should be con uh, counteracted with uh, a massive government program uh, requiring uh, mandating nudity in, in, in ever-increasing uh, situations. I think there should be toleration, and that there should be private. Uh, the pr and and this this goes in. You know, this kind of eliminates so many issues. You know, do you teach evolution or not? That's up to the school, and that's up to the people who pay for the school. Do they want their kids to learn uh, evolution or not? They can pay for that course or they cannot. You know, and if they don't like the policy that the schools that they're paying to go to have, then they can always switch to a different school or pull their kid out of school or whatever. Uh, it just makes was it otherwise a completely intractable issue, as far as I'm concerned, into a totally tractable one, one that's easily solved just by devolving this to uh, voluntary interactions to the to the to the owners and their customers and and to the persuasive to the persuasive powers of public opinion and that's it and and then you don't have this forcing people to adhere to something that they don't believe in you know forcing people to uh, pay for evolution education or for trans bathrooms or for uh, for tolerating public nudity when they don't or being prevented from doing it when they enjoy it. So I think that's really the answer. Now, it comes up to this question of, uh, of like, what about areas that aren't privately owned? I think this is a very interesting question uh, of how much unowned or marginal public land is there going to be? And, and I think that where most people live and in most of the world, the answer is going to be that this is going to be negligible. Uh, that private property is going to basically cover the terrestrial planet and very likely uh, the this, the ocean as well, um, with possible exceptions in places like Antarctica or Greenland or very very remote very rural areas. You might also have places where de facto there is no property owner, or maybe maybe there is a title or there's somebody who has a claim, but that their management of the area is and their oversight of the area is so minimal that it amounts to being property list. And I think in that case, it's not such an important question who does what or when. Um, so then there is another consideration here, another tangent off of this. Uh, I think that there should be a major shift in our legal order away from criminal law and penalties to uh, tort law, civil law, and restitution. Uh, it is a separate issue, but uh, and a big separate issue, but the idea that uh, if you do something that the government doesn't like and then you pay the government uh, a fine or get punished by the government just makes no sense to me, uh, creates a lot of 
bad incentives. It's a perversion of law. It's not how law law and order predate states. They exist in societies that don't have states. Uh, you know, people have disputes, and when people have disputes, there becomes an incentive for uh, norms to develop, uh, uh, rules to develop on how to manage those, and uh, having a system based on restitution makes so much more sense uh, than having a system based on, on on state penalties. And with nudity, it's hard to see you know where the victim is. It makes sense in a in a private property scenario. Hey, you violated the terms of service. We're kicking you off or we're trespassing you. It's not clear that there would be much of a penalty in that. The, the restitution for somebody seeing you naked, I can't imagine that that would be very high, although context maybe matters. Uh, if you were, say, ran out into a, say, into the field of a stadium and streaking, you know, the, the owners of the stadium or the owners of the sports team could say, hey, that was that was cash money you, you deprived of us. Restitution might be f fairly high. If you're just walking down the street, uh, you know the owners of the street could say, "Hey, you know, not okay." Uh, but it it the the restitution then could kind of be contextual on that. But I think it would in general would be kind of low, since the amount of damage that you're doing would be difficult to measure, uh, and probably not that high. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I just kind of wanted to use that 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 that, uh, that question as kind of a pivot for the other two. That a lot of these policy debates that people have, I think, uh, do rest on a, on a chain of assumptions that are disputable, and some of those are disputable on libertarian terms that are going to be a hard sell. You know, saying that we shouldn't have public schools is a hard sell for most people. Just the, the this, just because not, it's not just their intuition necessarily. It's it really is social proof and conservative bias that people just are. And 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 in the case of education literal indoctrination also uh, but uh, but then some of the other logical steps you know that there's a universal curriculum or that there's a universal answer or that there's a universal standard when it comes to nudity to pull back to the original question those are actually pretty debatable those are things that you think a lot of people who aren't even libertarians would understand and there's a, there's a way to kind of de facto get to libertarianism just by being a reformer just by saying look I'm not you're not you're not advocating for a complete abolition of the state and a complete anarchy and a complete radical anarcho capitalism, even though that is indeed my my position. Um, and just say, well, let's look at each individual thing. You know, should the government really be involved in say education or healthcare or roads or defense or whatever? Uh, and even people who are not radical libertarians might be willing to look at an individual topic and understand, hey, the influence of the state in this area has been uh, not not perfect right not utopian not optimal not ideal and indeed counterproductive and costly uh detrimental and in that, that's actually the case in i think pretty much everything you can look at um if you if you look at it with as an objective eye as possible you see that the status quo that we accept as the state is probably is is almost certainly not ideal or optimal uh, i mean you could always argue that like of all the possible systems that exist the one that currently exists is the best that could be done and I think that's very very unlikely just statistically now that does not in and of itself suggest necessarily that the libertarian solution is the optimal one or you could you could always say well the the optimal system would be even more government or whatever radical primitivism or something but uh, just the idea that so many people have that well whatever we have what works uh, therefore that must be the best, or there's a strong uh, presumption of correctness for the currently existing uh, order. Uh, people have to understand that that is a bias and a fallacy on their part, and that you must you must try and parse out uh, through empiricism and through logic and through reason what might actually be an improvement. Uh, and that's that's very difficult for most people to do. Right? People don't use uh, their analytical skills, which they do very much have, uh, for um, for such um, you know uh, what's the term here? P people are smart, and people uh, are intuitive, and people are able to be very sophisticated uh, when they're dealing with things in their real life, when they're dealing with their interpersonal stuff. You know, if you think that your uh, that your spouse or that your boyfriend or girlfriend is cheating on you. You can become very sophisticated in trying to 
understand you know their psychology and any indications about what they're really thinking and and gossip you know a lot of research on this we spent so much time interpersonally gossiping and working out the angles of what other people think and their look but we don't necessarily use that level of of reasoning when we talk about uh, you know um, more again I can't I'm mean, improving my own point here by not knowing, not coming up with a word here. But the um, the more abstract. There we go. Sorry. You know, it, it it's not as easy for most people to ap apply that to more abstract thinking, or, or to uh, become familiar uh, with hypothetical systems or to examine historical examples and what and 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 systematically discern how relevant are they how applicable are they you know, these are things that people just don't do as well as deciding you know if their coworker is an asshole or not and what they need to do to get their raise or get off early their their next shift or whatever um, or or what would be the right thing to say to get sex tonight from your girlfriend or or, or to convince them to say yes to a date or whatever um, so uh, these are these are major major hurdles uh, when we're debating people. But by parsing it off into little bits, you know, instead of saying, "Okay, no more government, it's not going to work. We need a radical anarcho-capitalism, Rothbardian, David Friedman, you know, uh, Commonwealth." Yeah, that's that's going to be. There's about one or two percent of the population that is far enough on the spectrum that they can go for ideas like that and that is indeed what a large proportion of the libertarian population is composed of those people you know they watch one youtube video or they they get exposed to the non-aggression principle and they just intuit the, the logic makes sense and they just take that leap and uh that's fine i have no problem with that um but that's not going to work on the vast majority of people but looking at a single issue and this is very interesting because there are, you know, if, we, if we're talking about school reform, there's a lot of people who are not libertarians, but who would have very libertarian reforms for what, whether it be education or say drug policy would be another one, guns, right? There's a lot of people in the United States anyway, who are very libertarian when it comes to guns. They might not be libertarian on social security or the police or education or healthcare, but they're libertarian when it comes to, to guns or to free speech or to education or whatnot. So uh, public nudity, I think, is one of those things. People have wildly differing views, wildly different differing preferences on what they think is acceptable or unacceptable. Uh, the pros and the cons of this uh, cannot, there is no objective correct answer here that could be, I mean, that, that would form the basis for a national government standard to be applied to everyone. I think that that um, is extremely foolish to even try and argue that uh, you know since people's reactions to this are different then there's no uh, there is no way to say well this level of nudity is clearly always wrong and this level of nudity is clearly always right uh, this is really going to be deriv a derivative of people's personal choices and per personal values and personal experiences and personal personal preferences about relative values so you know how much do you uh, value being able to go about your day without gawking versus how much does it actually hurt right so these are things that the state can't really resolve it's not really set up to resolve um, it's it's mostly a a wealth extraction power status extraction uh, institution based on uh, an alliance of various special interests and it's juggling that it's not it, it does doesn't have the means or the ability to come up to correct answers to these problems and they don't even have correct answers right there isn't there isn't a correct answer to whether evolution should be taught in school there isn't a correct answer to whether you should shower after gym class and there isn't a correct answer for everyone of whether nudity should or should not be allowed and under what context so this is why uh, devolution to private property owners is actually kind of the only real solution here and it's a good one so anyway uh, hope to make more videos soon. I will actually be going to CPAC next week for anyone who might just be happy to need to go. 
Uh, I've never gone to CPAC before, but it's been something that I've been curious about. I like to go to DC every year, and I just forgot to go to Students for Liberty. I've been going to the International Students for Liberty Conference for the last four or five years, and I just completely missed it this year because I had no idea that it already had gone on. But CPAC is next week, uh, basically the last weekend of February slash the first weekend of March. And so if anyone sees this video before that and is interested in saying hi, just let me know. And I will talk to you on another time. Bye-bye.